12.5 probability of independent and dependent events. So the probability of an independent event, um, we're talking about and um, now, and 12.4 we're talking about or, probability of getting a uh, ace or a king. So when we're talking about or, we added. Now we're going to be talking about and. And when we're talking about and, we're saying the probability of getting an ace and then a uh, king, for example. All right, so it's uh, the probability of events, but when we're talking about independent events, there are two events that have nothing to do with each other. So um, we're talking about and, we're talking about just multiplying them together, and it's just the probability of A times the probability of B. Um, so when we're taking a look at this, this is example three. It says you collect hockey trading cards, and for one team there are 25 different cards in the set and you have all of them except for the starting goalie card so to try to get this card you buy eight packs of five cards each and all cards in a pack are different and each of the cards is equally likely to be given a pack so find the probability you will get at least one goalie card well then look at it like this in a set there's 25 right so one goalie card out of 25 in that set okay well you know what no problem one goalie card out of a set no big deal but this is like we talked about before. You need to find the complement of the event because it's really not uh, helpful to you this way because uh, the probability of getting at least one goalie card, I could get two or three or four or five goalie cards. So it really is kind of like, well, you know, it's too difficult to do it by those manners. So the point I'm getting to you is we want to look at the complement. We want to look at not getting a goalie, which is 24 out of 25. So that's the opposite. The opposite is not getting a goalie. That's what we're looking at here, the absolute opposite of this. So of getting no goalie out of the total is 24 out of 25. That's why we have that. Um, but the reason why I'm doing combinations is because we're trying to find the different combinations of getting those cards. And we're using combinations because order does not matter. So since there's 24 um, that are not goalie cards. So there's 24, and we're choosing five of them. There's 25, and we're choosing five of them, and the 25 is the total. So look at it like this. I said to you that it was 24 out of 25 for not goalies. There's the 24. There's the 25. Okay. And we're choosing five uh, cards from each pack. That's why there's a five in each one of those. So, again, since it's at least, that's why we're doing the complement. So it's going to be 1 minus all of that. Because whatever that is, 24C5 over 25C5, that's no goalie. I want the probability of actually getting a goalie card. So when we find that out, um, what we have to keep in mind is that that's for one pack of cards. That's the probability if all we did was buy one pack of cards up there. 1 minus uh, 24 combination 5 over 25 combination 5. That's just for one pack of cards. But as you would expect, the more packs of cards you buy, the higher the probability is that you will actually uh, be able to choose or actually get that goalie card. So that's why we take it to the 8th power, because there's 8 uh, packs of cards that we're doing. So that takes us to um, 83.2% because now you're finding that number which I believe is 0 0.8 0 0.8 to the 8th power and you take 1 minus 0 0.8 to the 8th power and you end up with 83.2% and once again just think about it the more packs of cards you have the better your opportunity is of getting it right the better your opportunity is of getting it so example four, a computer chip manufacturer has found that only one out of a thousand of its chips is defective you know, not bad odds, but you're ordering a shipment of chips for the computer store where you work. How many chips can you order before the probability at least one chip is defective reaches 50%? Well, this, I think, is the problem that most of you have. The, 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 mo the, the problem that most of you have um, is y you don't think that it could ever get up to um, the probability being 50%, and the reason being is because you're looking at saying, well, it's only one out of a thousand, and you don't think that the percentage can actually grow of you actually choosing one, but it actually can. So just like the last problem, um, at least one out of a thousand chips, well, at least one out of a thousand, I mean, do you have any clue how many there are? I mean, that's ridiculous. So um, we'd have to keep looking through the probability.
probability of getting one, then two, then three, then four, and put them all together. Or we can do the opposite. Let's find the probability of none of them being defective. That is uh, 999 over 1,000. So we're trying to find our answer to be 0.5. That's why I have 0.5 equals that. And this is 999 over 1,000, because 1 minus that is the probability. But once again, um, just like the last problem, we had it set up to the eighth power because there are eight packs of cards. We're setting this up to the nth power because we want to figure out, well, how many packs of those chips are we going to have to buy before I reach 50% uh, or 0.5. So to solve this problem, we subtract 1 on both sides, and we end up with negative 999 over 1,000 uh, to the n equals negative 0.5. And we divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of the negative. So we have this. Now we didn't go over this types of problems yet, but we can solve this by using logs. Okay, I can take the log of um, log 0.5 over log of 999 divided by uh, 1,000. That will give me the exact answer. Or I can um, just sit around and keep guessing and plugging them in. And the reason why we have to do the plugging in is because we do not know what the answer is yet. So yes, we do have to keep sitting here and plugging in because we didn't get to logarithms yet. So the point is, um, the only hint I'm giving you is it's a whole number. And as you notice, um, you just keep typing in on your calculator over and over again, 999 divided by 1,000 and see what you get when you, like, 99, 999 divided by 1,000 in parentheses, caret sign, and just keep, you know, uh, plugging in numbers so you get closer and closer and closer and you get up to 693. So when I come back here we will talk about the dependent events and we will finish up on 12.5.